All right, welcome back to Daytime Tri-City. Spending our morning here at just an incredibly beautiful place. We are here at Nice Wonder Farm and Vineyards, and we are stopping in the greenhouse because you have got to see what this man and his team are growing here. Incredible things, Chef Milton. Thanks uh, for showing us around. Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't hide this from anybody. This is, you know, being able to come to work and see this every single morning. I mean, how could you be mad about that? Oh, my goodness. And you are literally growing things that have been passed down from generations. Yep. I, uh, I do a lot of seed saving. I feel it's very, very important uh, in, showcase, in showcasing what Appalachian cuisine is, was, and could, could, could be. Um, you've got to have those Appalachian heirloom ingredients that, that are so foundational to, to the cuisine and, and also the region. So, you know, we do a lot of that here because it's not like it's something you can buy from a, a purveyor. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in order to have those, we had to grow them, and it's, it's one of my favorite parts of the entire property. And he is really giving me all, all kinds of education here. You were telling me, what is this plant over here? Oh, we've got some cucamelons over there. It's a tiny little almost cucumber that looks like a small watermelon when it's, when it's ripe. Um, and you're pickling these. We pickle them, and we pickle them in Sprite. Um, mm. it's, it's really, really cool. Um, and then we've got some tomatoes over here. We've got a, a ton of, of microgreens and herbs. Um, as well as tomatoes, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff is here, uh, kind of getting ready to go into the ground as we start planting next week. Uh, we've got the Tennessee yeah. sweet potato pumpkins. Um, the, ano how another, much do those weigh? Those are huge. Some of those are probably about 80 pounds. They are they are pretty <laughs> big. Uh, we use this as, as also like a root cellar, so all of my all of my gourds cure in here uh, for use. Um, a lot of our ornamentals are in here right now as well because it's springtime, but. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. The Swiss Shard over here is something that's, that's constantly on the menu because it's so beautiful, but it's, it's my favorite place to go and just hang out. Okay, and ask about the pineapple tree because you're growing pineapples. We are literally growing pineapples in here. Like, there's a couple little baby guys over here. Uh, we only get like three or four a year. Okay. But, that's uh, a star, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And then back here you also have a lime Tree? Oh yeah, there's a, you can see it right there. Like it's 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 very large and tall, um, right beside my ginormous uh, rosemary bush. Oh yeah, uh, everything in here is is in full flourish mode. It's it's just so beautiful. Um, I love being able to have access to this stuff all the time, and it makes it makes my job easy because when I'm utilizing food that's at the peak of its its flavor, I don't have to do a whole lot. How much of your menu is taken from things that you have right here on the property? Um, Produce-wise, probably about 96 to 98 percent of, of wow. all the, uh, the fruit and vegetables, you know, they all come from on property, and that's, that's an important thing to me. And if it doesn't, it comes from a farmer in the region. Uh, I want to really focus on that. That's one of the things that I've always been very staunch about in my culinary career. And, of course, you also have, I, I've heard chickens this morning. We passed some some different cows we've got morning. chickens we've got uh we've got black angus uh cattle that we actually process on uh, we will be processing on site we're getting ready to have some uh, uh mangalita hogs uh which are uh descendants of of an amazing pig from spain you know we're uh we're trying to do as much as we can on property and and give people access to these amazing amazing ingredients that you can't just find anywhere and pickling and you said curing and really being true to the Appalachian culture. You said that's something very important It's to you. huge. You know, one of my biggest things is I want to cultivate a taste of a place. And in order to do that, people have to be able to taste something that would be growing or popping up in the springtime when they come in December. So part of Appalachia, you know, it's, it's the only part of the South that experienced seasonality uh, to the extreme that we do. So it's a huge part of Appalachian food is, is curing preserving and being able to have that stuff at all points in the year in some way, shape, or form. So everything starts right here yep. and makes its way over right across the property. We have this incredible open air restaurant, which we're going to take our viewers to next. Yep. I understand you've got some things you're going to show us. Yep, I'm gonna, I've am gonna. got some things to show you, some things to taste, eat, you know, we'll, we'll kind of kind of do like a full, full little five minute, uh, <laughs> <laughs> as much as I can. So As much as we can in five fabulous minutes. Yes. I love it. Chef, thank you so much for showing us this incredible incredible property. Once again, we are here at Nice Wander Farm and Vineyards, and coming up, we're going to take you inside their open-air restaurant. It is open to the public. We're going to tell you how you can make your reservations so you can really experience this area.